for bringing us together again today. We are back to our training and uh, we are privileged to have all of us joining physically with me here. I have um, nine persons in my mini studio. And I also want to thank you for those of you that are joining virtually. And I'm sure soon others are most likely to join us. I'm going to get the link now for our Facebook, uh, YouTube streaming. And we can share to other persons who may want to join from their various centers. But however, let's have our writing materials and let's uh, make sure we lend our listening ears to the training because this today's own is um, the climax of this particular outline, which is on one on one uh, techniques on how to give Bible study or how to engage people with the intention of leading them to Christ. All right, so I I will be asking for us now for someone to give us a review of yesterday's class. Um, let me let me ask. Let me go with Niyi. Uh, come over here. Okay, don't just stay there and share with us louder. Give us a review of yesterday's class. We talk about how we can share the message to our friends, family, and love. Firstly, as you see, on one on one witnessing techniques, our need a revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. We see this should be our first work. Our need of a relationship with him, a meaningful devotion life, the results of divine power and when Jesus method alone. Christ method alone gives two sources in which the people, the Savior, needed the men as long well, desire their good. He showed his sympathy for them, means sat down is and when they are confident, then he paid them for him. So we are talking about firstly hospitality, divine dinner invitation to our neighbors and family friends. If we humble ourselves before God and be kind and cautious and tender -hearted and pitiful, there will be one hundred conversions to the truth. When now there is no more. When someone visits you, thank God Thank God for the prayer. Once on visit it, thank God for the prayer and prayed. Ask God for protection. The third one is at church, teaching and fellowship, the special Bible class. Kindness and friendliness make visitors want to return. Proper balance between the people and the neighbor. It is Christ centered Bible part teaching. Appropriate dress and women. Telling them, they will, telling people, telling the church members that they will be visitors and to show the area of school. And casual relationship in the bus, train, plane, meeting, and so on. The girls that in the bus, that we see in the morning, but you can't see that. Have you heard the news about today that there's an earthquake that happened in Germany? I feed almost 500,000 people. And you can read the Bible passage support that in Revelation that said that this day, that we are at the end of the world, that we see many things. Then the waiter, then the number two, waiter, still, and some person. When like the waiter or the socialist, they don't have much, they don't have much of their time to spend before. So we can give them a trap. Their number will be at the back of the trap. To share to the real word of God and my thing work please. You can tell the person that is selling that your your meat is very fresh. This is the most good food food that this food is good. And my pork pack. And when you are traveling, you can say that well, what you can do one that food. Don't, 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 don't. And my five work to neighbor with you can get the gospel in your school, tell your friend. About Jesus or what place are you going? And invitation to your own, ask questions that will draw them out. Invitation to some, will some circular activities that will give you opportunities to enjoy something together. Like now, maybe 
the person you are, your friend in your neighborhood likes to play football, you can write that okay, they are playing a football somewhere, they are letting them play football too. And if you take your church activities, maybe in the church, they are doing like, um, what they, um, they, are, they are doing fellowship, like a call, like a so to follow the church I do for you, like a, like a lot of people. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that was a quick review of yesterday based on, uh, let me take somebody from online testimony. Uh, maybe is there any part that uh, he mentioned that you would love to add? The part he did mention. Yes, testimony, unmute yourself and speak. Okay, 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 yes, sir. With what, uh, what he said, uh... Um, my own summary of what he says is, is about how we can bring people to Christ by slow before, especially whenever we want to communicate with strangers outside, that we should try not to say things that to cultivate them by telling them, so, uh, asking them about themselves. You know, put you know, you have to know about that person first, so the people the person can know that you are interested in the person's life story and you want to. Want to, um, to um, encourage them about what is going on by, um, especially when you want to include, um, by saying the word of God to them. You should ask for their life experience. Tell them about, ask them, tell them about what um, is going on and how you can help them in each way or the other. Another way is that you can also help. You can also include your friends and relatives in word of God by. Um, including them in social activities, especially strangers, in social activities in order to get to know yourself better, including them in social church activities in order to know the word of God and so on and so forth, even friends and family. That's my own. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, generally speaking, what we learned yesterday was how we can witness at home what we talk about that uh, the need for this work is very sacrosanct and god is willing to use us and a quote i gave us is from my where it says that there is no limit to the usefulness of anyone who is who put itself aside and gives room for the holy spirit no matter your age no matter your gender no matter your social status there is no limit to how useful you can be i guess me around so don't belittle yourself don't think you are under age don't think you are not able to speak. You can't stand. You can't win friends. Don't be lit to yourself. Only what you need to do is to leave yourself for the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about the need for the Holy Spirit. And Lewa tells us that a revival of true godliness is the most and the greatest and urgent need of our time. And to seek this must be our first work. We need to give ourselves to the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that can take us the way we are change us transform us empower us i will read at chapter 1 verse 8 it says that i shall receive power after the holy spirit of lord has come upon you and shall be witnesses unto me in jerusalem in judah and to the uttermost part of the earth and from there we now went into how we can also get a relationship with jesus christ and we said witnessing is actually a very delicate art of tactfully and lovingly leading others into a relationship with christ it's like you saying my friend come i have another friend i want to link you to you pick your other friend's hand which is jesus christ you bring your other friend and you join their hands together that's what witnessing means you have a friend in jesus then you bring another friend to be a friend to who to jesus christ that is witnessing that's all you need to do with your public speaking with your social media and with witnessing one on one and for you to do that, you must first have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Are you getting that point now? So without you having a relationship with Jesus Christ, it is difficult for you to connect anybody. For you that are here with me now, and for those of you who are far away, but you are still close to me, it is easier for somebody who I may not really flow with directly, but since I flow with you, you can bring the best. So come and join live streaming. Come and join ICT. Come and join media. Come and join somebody speaking. Get the point now. Because you have a friend. So you are... I'm not connected to your friend directly, but you are connected to your friends. So you want to bring that your friend to meet your other friend that you have, which is myself. So Jesus Christ is the greatest friend we have. I want to bring others to have a relationship with him. So how do you do that in your home, at school, at the church, at work, at the community, within the community? And even when you are traveling on the bus, on the train, on the train, or even when you are taking a flight in the air, you need to bring a friend. 
then we now mention that Ellie White says that the greatest method to bring a friend to Jesus Christ is the method of Jesus Christ. Say the savior mingled with men, take Christ's method alone. We give true source. So this is a ministry of healing, page 143. The savior mingled with men. Christ alone we give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed them sympathy and then ministered to them and won their confidence. For he now said, he now be there, follow me. So you must mingle with people that have similar interests with you or that have an interest and you be part of their interest. And through that means you be befriend them and you bring them to Jesus Christ. So your gift is important. I said, Nobody reminded me yesterday. I said I was going to send a link to the platform for you to do your uh, your gifts uh, assessments. So uh, for those that are online, please, somebody should note that again to remind me. So that after the session, I will go get the link and post on. So uh, your gift, you can have the gift of administration, gift of healing, gift of faith, gift of uh, wisdom, gift of uh, healing, gift of um, apostleship, uh, teaching, pastoring all of these gifts are the unique things that god has given to you to do the work so the way i may be doing it might not be the same way god will lead you to do it but then you have to use your gift to make your service unique in bringing souls to jesus christ and you have to use casual friends it's not only your friends that you know already that you can bring to jesus christ are we together now yes, you can bring people who you have never met before and so when you're on the bus station there's a friend that's sitting beside you and I told you yesterday you can strike a discussion with them by just telling the person, um, oh, just have, you know, we greet the person first, or better still, after you have greeted the person, you may just say, my name is Jeffrey. Have you read the news today? And say, ah, what news is that? And I say, oh, ah, Bob Risky has been sentenced to six months imprisonment too. I say, ah, hey, that's true. Is that true? Oh, oh, I read it too. The person will answer a different way. I read it too. And I say, ah, are you surprised what is happening? He said that uh, it was issue of uh, money mutilation, money abuse. It was spread and all of that. Hey, why did they have to do that to him? You know, that can be to end. Can I bring in? You know that this guy that is, is a guy and he's saying it's a boy, it's a girl. And is we surgery to bring us some features like a, a do you know what the Bible says about do you know what the Bible the good book says about such kind of things? Say, I don't know. Hey, not not come to Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Say that man should not we should not make use of uh, natural things for um, the that a man should not call himself a woman. You no, know, can I bring in LGBT knowledge into you know from there? Bible study. If you cannot, if you cannot finish talking in that bus, collect the person's number give your number when you get home establish your relationship via whatsapp via facebook whichever way and they begin to start talking with the person that's how it starts but you must use a general knowledge to bring the person to a knowledge you want to have the person uh, you want to give to the person so all those things we look at yesterday you already mentioned about the waiter and all of that and then uh, in the marketplace i do it in the park but one thing to mention that you should have a piece of literature with you and that's why we are using our tracks so as long as you are doing this work, by God's grace, leaves of auto ministry, we provide you trust free of charge. So when you are going home, always come for trust. Just tell me ahead of time, a week before you are leaving, that you need trust, and we will provide you as many copies that you want to do this work in a very unique and dynamic way. So uh, that's how we just review for yesterday. So today, We'll be diving into witnessing by your testimony. What did I say? I didn't hear that very well. Witnessing by your testimony. Good. Now, you see, one thing we must know is that once you have thought through your personal testimony, your personal testimony is what you, what a, a, a story about your own life, you know, and you must try to fix this story in your mind. And, uh, when you have opportunity to share it, you have great variety of ways and situations. You could share your, your testimony or you could share your own story. So it's very useful in you conversing with any, any new person you meet while you are traveling or while you're in the bus or wherever to bring the person to Christ. So at times, you may have to be the one to share your testimony with a neighbor you know, that is close to you. Or someone who just came to visit you, or someone that is a neighbor that is across the other fence, or 
within your compound. You know, sometimes it could be that you really want to go to their own house and share your story with them on some particular issues because actually it is best we go to them because most times people will not come to us. It was, well, I don't want to talk about a small group yesterday, home fellowship. Yes, yes sir. Sometimes they will not come to your house. And I said, well, I do home fellowship. You can use to share biscuits, yes. fruit, to attract yes. them, even yes. food, yes. drinks. Yes. yes, that will make them to actually call. If you do it the first and they came, and it's something very unique and sweet, can make your dining table the place for your Bible study. <laughs> you just say, well, let's pray, and you pray, and they are discussing, you are, they are eating. Yeah, oh, they say, okay, next week, we're going to have this again, or next month, we're going to do it again. They, will, like, ah, they remember that they, they, they ate wait. something. They will come again but there are six of persons even if you do it like that they will never come but however it is better we go to them so because jesus actually showed that example he just went to homes going to different places to do this ministry so we must also evangelize by going to the people the apostles do the same thing and then and every door that god will open for us we must use it excitedly as an adventure to make friends and to lead them to jesus christ now on the screen is a, it's an acronym, FOTS, F O R O T, for those of you like, just to you, I don't need to come here. Now, F stands for family, O stands for occupation, R, religion, T, testimony. Now, this word FOTS can serve as a memory device, a mnemonic that will help you structure the first part of any visit when we talk about prospects. You know, so that's a family. So what you do when you want to begin a conversation with somebody, you can just introduce yourself and ask the person, oh, are you married or are, are you, you, are, you, you have you have children? You're talking about the family now. Yes. Or if there's no married, okay, are you the firstborn? Are you the first, mm -hmm. are you the last child? Are you, you know, what's the number in the family? Then from there, you can have, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a businessman. Oh, I'm a student. Oh, I'm a, an accountant. I'm an engineer or whatever. Yeah. Person that said, let the conversation be about the person more because people want to talk about themselves more than they want to hear about you then the next thing you know, after the occupation you now go to religious background oh which should you are you which are you christian are you muslim which should you belong to you know yes can you ask people now respond and mention and talk about their religious background oh then the next thing will not be for you so oh even me too I, I I am the last born of my family, and uh, I'm a I'm a religious scholar. I'm a teacher, and also a pastor. I am a missionary, and uh, I'm also a farmer. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know. I start talking about myself. Uh, by God's grace, I am a Christian to the core, and I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, I got converted 2008 uh, August. No? I believe that talking about myself, I, I will follow you together now. Yes, sir. However, this is how you begin to converse. Before you know, you are spent five minutes, yes. 10 minutes, 15 yeah. minutes with the person. But at the beginning, you might just be like, oh, oh let's just go with this person. So when you now begin with from the point of what? What's the best word now? Family. 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 Talk about family. Number two. Occupation. Occupation. Number three. Religion. 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 So all of this will give you a knowledge on how you now begin to address the person and talk to the person before you know you have made a friend are we together yes, before you know you have made it however let's be careful there are some places they don't like you to talk about their family, their family yes. or anything about, or about their you don't like it so in such in such places don't 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 flog it find a way to trigger the it can be a, a news now in the test news yes. to be aware of tracking a a decision or a uh, kind of a conversation now when i talk about personal testimony it's really an excellent way that you will build a rapport between an individual and yourself remember that the purpose of your testimony is to create a desire in the heart of others for what a similar experience like your own why you share your testimony to with people is because you want the person to also have an experience with who you have your testimony is how you got converted how you became who you are as a Christian. Are you with me now? Yes, sir. So your personal testimony of what Jesus means to you will likely prove to be the most effective way to make a transition from the building of confidence stage to the visit of presenting the gospel as we'll be describing soon. So your personal testimony is 
the account of what yourself have experienced of the power of Christ, what he has done in your life. Are we together now? Yes, what Christ has done for you is a major testimony that you want to share with the person. Your testimony might revolve around some special answer to your prayers, a particular victory uh, that made Jesus real to you, you know, and, uh, and inspire counsel from the Jewish in the Vedantic page 4, it says that, tell them how you found Jesus and how blessed you have been since you gained an experience in his service. Tell them of the gladness and joy that there is in Christian life. Evangelist page 4, 86. So before writing out your testimony or for sharing it, you might find it helpful to also read the story of uh, Paul in the Bible recorded in Acts chapter 22. Paul gave his own personal testimony, how he got yes. converted. Read his own story. It will give an idea of how you can arrange your own personal testimony with others. Your testimony may not necessarily be yourself alone. It can be the, how your entire family got converted. Your father he got converted. But for most of them that are still very much young, you may not have gotten baptized so well yet, but doesn't mean you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can talk about how your mother, how your father, how your father, your mother, how they assisted Jesus Christ, how you too was not born into, or you were born into their family, and from there, you have been growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and you have been enjoying the fellowship with what? With Jesus. So, you have a personal, unique story that you may want to share. Share that of what? Your parents. Are we together? Yes, share that of your parents that you are connected with, because... In that way, you will find out that you will be making a unique friends with others. All right. And now let's quickly look at um, the three essential elements of a testimony. The first one, how you structure your testimony. The A part is that you talk about my life before becoming a Christian. Your life before becoming, if you're going to share all of your parents, you share the life of what? your father or your mother before they became what a christian but take note uh that you know you don't need to dwell so much on that life before they became god it may have been very terrible so don't share don't talk too much about what they did that were evil don't talk about they were not so good a people they know they didn't have they were not so morally sound but eventually this was how they met the next thing you know be how they became a Christian, or how you became a Christian. So you talk about a little bit of what, how before they before they became a Christian, then how they became a Christian. The third one is what Jesus has now done for them. What Jesus means to you now. For me, I can say that if I want to share my own personal testimony, yes, I was a church goer. I was not. It was a scripture union member, but I was not baptized. I see it food sacrificed to idols my father was an african traditionalist he was the chairman he was your guy the people come to our house to do their sacrifices and i ate the food they used to doing sacrifices and they i ate snail i ate snake i ate goats i ate uh, even tortoises yes they used to do sacrifices i ate all of those things so i didn't see anything wrong about it before that time but when i met with jesus christ august 2028, 20, 20, 20, the, the whole story changed for me. I, the experience was unique. And from that time till now, my life has taken a new dimension and I have become useful. But yesterday, I was just wondering about that, what the Lord has been doing in my life till now. It's about uh, 17 years now, you know, about 15 years. So, and God is still doing a lot of things. So, you will need to do this with them. Well, but don't forget your major purpose is to say now you too, no matter your life right now, God can save you. Your purpose actually is to present not yourself, but to exalt Jesus Christ. You can share your testimony, but you are sharing your testimony in the light of what Jesus has done for you. Are we care? Yes, sir. Are we getting the points? Yes, so some of the yes, points need, is number one, don't glamorize the sinful, like I was saying, for don't glamorize sin by ten, telling about its pleasure how wicked you used to be or how you got away with all the things you did maybe we don't feel that like in school mm -hmm. you did wicked things class in school you stole people's uh, uh permissions Thank and you, you, you didn't steal they didn't, they didn't catch you then all of you like i said you must give your life to jesus christ for you to be a common missionary you must have a relationship with it. if you are doing anything evil you must take your hands off it 
so that Jesus can use you, only so he can feel you. So number two, avoid expressions that may not be meaningful to a non-Christian. Don't be saying, uh, I, receive, I receive a blessing. They may not understand what that means. What that means. Or talking about since I became a, 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 I came into this message, or since I have said the truth. They don't know this is yet. If they graduate, don't use technology, they don't understand. Number three, don't be worthy. Make your testimony short. Make your testimony short. Don't be too verbose, talking too much. Okay. Yeah. Number three, uh, number four, never speak critically of other churches. Don't bring what you're talking about your testimony. Don't go and break other churches down because you don't know where they are. If you speak against their own, you're you just going to push away that friend. So don't speak critically about other churches. Don't talk about your testimony and how what Jesus has done for you. I'm going to get them more. Then be specific. Don't be generalizing. Be specific about what you say to them. People will remember what that specific thing you said. Okay. Then on that point is that identify with others. Make sure you emphasize those areas in your experience that you share in common with them. The love, maybe the loss of a loved one, war, accident, separations from schoolmates, uh, or you lost a job, or you moved from one place to the other. Make sure you mention some events that withdraw the person closer and elicit, you know, uh, their, their own comments. Like, oh, I also had that experience too. Oh, I had lost my father too. But I don't have a father. Can I want to talk about how when I lost my father, it was that same, okay, it was three years after when I was in one convention that my father died, you know. Oh, I, oh, I, mean, I don't have a father. You know, when you mention those kind of common interests, it can spark what uh, a kind of a feeling of relationship between you and them. Then the other point is that emphasize the friendliness you have found in Christ's great family. Emphasize the, the friendliness you have found in Christ's great family. Talk about what you are now doing amongst what other brethren. What the relationship you found among them. Oh, the people you are with, they, lo they are loving. They are caring, they pray with you, they encourage you, you know, emphasize all of those things. Then, on that part, is always be kind and tactful. Be kind in your words and be tactful. Never appear to be so over-righteous that like you are better than the person. Never do that. Don't do holier than thou. Then, another thing is they always be kind and tactful. Okay, I mentioned that. Now, pray that your countenance will radiate, you know, assurance and let your smile speak the language of heaven. When you are giving the testimony, let it review that yes, you actually found Jesus and he's, he's making a difference in your life. So that's just um, on how you share your personal testimony. Now let me go to the point of the outline. The outline uh, of your testimony. Um, now, in getting acquaint acquainted or gaining confidence of your casual friends, this is what you do. I mentioned the fact before, now you talk about family, yeah. occupation, yes. religion. religion, and testimony. testimony. So now they say we need to know more about the people. We call it diagnostic question from the word diagnosis. If you go to the hospital, you say you are sick, they will diagnose you. They will take your blood sample yes. or whatever that is in your urine. They go and take it to. They will not say what's wrong. They might ask you of simple symptoms, but they want to know the actual problem. They will take your blood sample or your urine to the lab yeah. and do treat they are do uh, experiments yes. and do what we call diagnosis so that we want to know about the person you have to have it there's a good uh, diagnostic question the question is ask the person in your opinion how does one become a christian if you want to know who that person if person actually has received jesus Christ, how do you want to become a christian then whatever the person will say will now lead you mm -hmm. to now do the next part which is gospel presentation remember all of the friendship we are making, all the casual friends we are making is the point is to lead the best to who? God. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now, how do you present the gospel? Now, this is the first thing you do. In present the gospel, the fourth thing is the attraction. What can attract the person? What do you need to do? You attract them to Jesus Christ. And what do you do? You talk about God's love. What did I say? God's love. In First John 4, verse 8, the Bible says that he that does not love does not know God for God is love. love. That was what I that was the test I used to do yes. graphic design the other day. Yes. Oh, first John for message, remember? Yes. So that one you cannot talk about God loves us, He loves every one of us, whether old, young, Perfect. rich, poor, old. He, he loves everyone, and that was why He gave His only begotten Son 
to come and die for us. John 3 16. Okay. That whosoever believe in him, we know what perish will have everlasting. But before you present that test, what you do, talk about the problem of sin. Talk about what the problem, the problem of sin. And this sin that came in, God lost how was created in heaven and earth, and it, it broke us into this earth. Our four parents, Adam and Eve, were given what the garden of Eden, but they lost it because of sin. And that sin, what did you do? That sin created a separation between mm -hmm. us and God. And that separation now leads to what we call death. We all know Romans 3 23. For the wages of sin is, is death. death. Is so that death that has that all men are to experience now is why there is a solution. That solution is what the gift of forgiveness and life in Christ. So can I read that John 3 16? Romans 6, 23, Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, 1 John 5, verse 11 to 13. So you now read all these texts so that God now, Jesus Christ is not the solution to the problem of sin. Sin caused a separation between us and God. But Jesus Christ is what is the solution. And after you present that solution, you are not to say, now as a friend, they must try to detach themselves from sin. And that detachment from sin is so called repentance what i call it repentance, repentance. so you now start to say my friend if you have been involved in sin this sin can, it has caused a separation between you and god god wants to what be separated from what from sin then i read like romans chapter 2 verse 4 to talk about how we can be how we can repent from sin after you talk about repentance from sin they now talk about them attaching themselves to christ if they detach themselves from sin what should they do? They should attach themselves to who? Christ. To Christ. Christ. So don't leave them hanging that they detach themselves from sin and they are not attached to anything. Once they yes. detach, they must attach. They must attach. And who they are attached to? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ. You can read Revelation chapter 3, okay. verse 20. Behold, I knock at the door of your heart. If any man opens, I will come and soup with you. So we talk about that with them that now Jesus is coming. Jesus wants to enter their heart. Jesus wants to be their friend. He just wants to be your partner. You want to be their partner. Okay. Yeah, then once you have finished that, you now begin to maybe you know pray with them. You know, now do a prayer of reception. You now say, Now let me lead you to Jesus Christ. Uh you you, would you want to be. I will talk about how to gain with uh, 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 gain decisions. Now, it's okay. At this point, I think I need to pray with you for Jesus to accept you. Now, let's close our eyes. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus. Thank you for my life. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for my sins. I am missing you today. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Accept me as your son. Accept me as your son. And write my name in the book of life. And write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of life. I've led to Christ, and that's how you lead others to Christ. You are leading them to who? To Jesus Christ. Are you getting me now? Then you can now begin to talk about how you can continue their relationship with Jesus. What do they do now? Try to say, okay, I would love to study more of the Bible with you. Book an appointment with them for Bible study. Yes. Then in that Bible study, you also do what's called prayer. Do prayer with them and fellowship with them. And then yes. we keep, if you were able to join you to also do witnessing and bring them to fellowship with the body of Christ. Yes. Everybody focus, okay? Yes. Now, let's talk about the aspect of witnessing to gain decisions. Principles to keep in mind. When you are witnessing to gain decision now the first principle is that you have to ask for a decision on the material presented at the end of every study remember you have led the person to jesus christ and now you want to be doing bible study with the person now when you are doing bible study if you present message on prayer you have to help them to reach a decision to be praying every morning every evening now take note my brothers and my sisters when you are giving a preaching assignment to do one point i emphasize is that you must make an appeal don't preach a message without making an appeal you must make your congregation to make i told you about a public speaking remember yes, sir. to take an action i use an example of uh, creation yes, yes. If, if it is being is is the is, is, uh, is uh degrade, de degrading and you want to say you want to call an action for all of us to take care of creation. You must make them make a decision to take charge of their environment. 
I was together. So you must appeal. So after every study, after every sermon you preach, after every, um, even if you don't normal speech you give, no matter the speech you give, you must get to the point where you ask them to what, take a decision. Then number two principle, when you are witness to gain decisions, is to encourage your audience or your students to put into practice each duty as it unfolds. Take note, light that a person does not follow will turn to darkness. What did I say? Light that a person does not follow turns to darkness. Turn to darkness. For every light to share with them, they what they follow the light, encourage them to take actions. That's number two principle. Number three principle is that do not ask for major decisions until the person has sufficient information to enable him or her make intelligent choice. Don't help people to make decisions when they have a limited knowledge. Let them have a full knowledge of the thing. I will tell them right now before you lead them to the point of decision. Then number four, call for decision when you see evidence of conviction. Call for decision when you see evidence of conviction. What does this mean? You must learn to recognize a decision signals. Decision signals such as the following questions a person might raise. When a person is asking, maybe you talk about issue of Sabbath. You say, what if my husband would not let me keep the Sabbath? What if I can't get Sabbath off for my work? What would my neighbor say about me keeping Saturday or Sunday that I've been worshiping? Each one of all of these questions are signals that show that the person is already contemplating, accepting, and deciding to do what you have shared with the person. Yes. Are we together now? So this is the, the best time to ask them to make a decision. Then number five principle is ask for a decision on the basis of a choice between two alternatives what does this mean we are actually you know planning a baptism for example you want to lead the person to get to the point of baptism you can say we are planning a baptism and uh, we want to use uh, the 14th of april are we do this what this now 14th or you can say next 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 sabbath is a uh, Maybe 20th. We are planning to do up to 20th of April or 27th of April. You cannot ask the person which would be better for you to do baptism. Don't leave the person without making a decision. You must ask them. If you don't ask them, they will leave like they remain like that. So you are trying to help them towards witness to gain what decision. Sure. Now there are steps to gaining decision. There are steps to gaining decision. Number one, number one step to gaining decision is teach the whole message yourself. Teach what? The whole, the whole message yourself. Number two, teach with conviction. Don't teach a message that you don't believe in. Don't teach a message that you yourself don't have a full conviction about. So teach first the whole message. Number two, teach with conviction. Number three, gain progressive assent. As you are talking to the person, whatever you have said before, ask the person, do you believe this? Do you understand this? You basically say, yes, yeah. I do, or oh, I don't. So you basically don't understand progressive accent. Gain progressive accent. A double S E N T. Accent. Let the person ascend to, oh, I believe in the Bible. Oh, I believe in Jesus Christ. Oh, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Oh, I believe in prayer. That's progressive. Or if we are studying Sabbath now, oh, I believe that God made the heavens and the earth in seven in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. In Genesis account. Oh, I believe that uh, the 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 Ten Commandments says that we should keep the Sabbath day. You ask the person, do you believe that Ten Commandments says it? Say yes, it's here, it's there. It's also chapter twenty, verse uh, verse eight to eleven. He believes it. They ask, do you believe that uh, uh, Abraham also kept the Sabbath? Yes, of course I believe because God gave all of this. Thing. Do you believe that Jesus Christ kept the Sabbath? Oh yes, I believe. It's found in Luke chapter four, verse sixteen. Do you believe that the apostle kept the Sabbath? Yes, I believe. It's found in Acts chapter thirteen, verse forty-two to forty-four. After 18, verse 2, after 17, verse 2. I believe this. Do you believe? You know, that's progressive. They are believing gradually. They now say, Do you believe we should keep this about day today? If you say yes or no, that's when you come. So, you know, if your message has not got to describing what we should keep this about today, because in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23 and 24, the Bible says that we are going to keep Sabbaths in heaven. So, we are going to keep Sabbath in heaven that we, are, we want to go to 
why would why, why would we not go to keep Sabbath now? Who want to keep Sabbath now? So you have a will. So I'm not trying to tell you about gaining progressive asset. Number three, number four is secure surrender to Christ first. Before you talk about doctrinal issues, make sure they surrender to who? To Christ. To Christ. Then number five, visit in the home. Visit them in their homes too. Know where they live, where they are, if possible. Number six, impress the urgency of obedience. Don't let them, don't study with them and just keep them like that. Try to encourage them to what? To follow the thing you have. So that's why I told you the day we are doing social media usage. I told you go and create what? An account. Oh, yes. Go and create that Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat. Snap, uh, on the social media that you are okay with. Because I want you to what? To obey and to follow immediately. So I don't want to just learn it and then that's the end of it. No, you have to use immediately. Begin. Start practicing. So don't, that's the thing you are teaching people. Don't teach them to just have a head knowledge and they will not do the practical. They will lose the knowledge because all that things will come and clog the whole time away and they will not follow. Then number seven, cite your own experience. When you're talking with them, cite how you're able to overcome some of the things that you overcame and how you beat them. Number eight, let God's word answer excuses. I'm going to talk about some excuses that people give for not asking Jesus Christ. I will share some, some with you. So when you want to answer their excuses, oh, my husband, oh, my work, oh, my children, oh, my this, oh, my that, how oh, because of that, I cannot do this, oh, my parents. Bible will answer, let the Bible speak. Let the Bible what? Speak. speak and answer their excuses, okay? And I will share the question they give to you, the some of the excuses we give, and the Bible test to answer them. I will share them with you. There are very many. Some of them, anyway, not all many, not too many, but there is something of them. Then offer decision prayers. Offer decision prayers frequently. Once they make a decision, pray with them. Are we together? Then number 10, counsel off with your pastor. If you have if you are feeling challenging to reach help the people, speak with your pastors, speak with your evangelists in the church or whoever that can assist you, can give you support in doing the work more better. Then number 11, accompany the family to church. Invite them to church and go and join them from home and come to church together. Are we together now? Okay, then number, uh, uh, that's the last one we'll do. Now let's talk about some of uh, something we can classify as iron bands. Iron, a band is what used to tie things together. So something like um, some uh, there are something called iron band, iron <laughs> that binds something like when you used to wear things together. So we classify we can classify the iron band that holds people back from decision in the following categories. Number one category is what we call temporary interest. Temporary interest can make people not to what follow Jesus Christ, so meditation for Christ. And what are these example is fear of losing job. Oh, if I start tips about now and I used to go to work on Saturday, I will lose my job. I will lose my interest. Job, you can change job at any point in time. You can leave job and do your business. You can leave job and then travel out and start up something. Job is temporary interest. Sometimes job can make one of the world accept Jesus Christ. Number uh, the B. Lack of faith to begin keeping Sabbaths. They may lack the faith. Ah, it is very difficult for me to do it. I don't know if I have the faith to do so. Then, C, habits such as smoking and drinking. If they are drink drunkards, if they smoke a lot, to make sure it's very difficult for them. Yeah. Because people you meet with, they will have various challenges in their lives. I always mean. Yeah. Yes, sir. Then, the other, another uh, classification of uh, iron bands is what called family ties. Family ties. The first one is what? Temporary, Temporary interest. interest. Second one is what? Family, Family ties. ties. Thank you very much for your response, for your feedback. Now, the first family tie is opposition from a loved one. Maybe a wife. How my husband? Oh, my wife. Oh, my children. Oh, my parents. They will not allow me. That's an opposition. Family ties can prevent people from making decisions. decisions. Number two is fear of dividing the family. Ah, now my family members, they are all going to Catholic church. Yes. All my family are going to redeem. Ah, I will not be keeping Sabbath and will not leave them. Ah, I'm not sure it's, it's impossible. I will not divide my family. They are afraid of division. Yes. They can express this. Then 
on that classification of iron bond is what we call church and social ties. Church and social ties. An example is maybe they are a they, they belong to a, a prestigious church, a popular church. Maybe they belong to a, let's say Roman Catholic church. They belong to one redeemed winners. They belong to a uh, Christ Apostolic Church, the Church Church of Christ. They belong to Baptist, you to Methodist. And not only that, maybe they even hold a position in the church as an elder or a pastor or a deacon or a deaconess or what? Anglican. What kind of position do they hold there? Uh, no, 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 Anglican. Bishop. Bishop. Reverend Father. Reverend Father. So they Okay, Please. what do you say? What do you say? What is Ima, you said something. And now, priest. 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 Oh, how many? They are also priests. So all of these things, they hold a prestigious position in a, a popular church. To begin to leave those churches and they come and accept the message you are presenting can be a difficulty for them. On that one can also be sentimental ties to family church. They say, oh, my father attended this church. Oh, my great-great-grandfather attended this church. Oh, my great-great-great-great-grandfather attended this church. Oh, all my family lineage, they have been going to this church. How will I leave this church now? How will I leave this church? Is that funny? Why they should not leave? On that one is fear of losing friends. Oh, all my friends are from my church. If I now leave this church now, I will lose my friends. They will express all of these things that will hold them back. The number four, they will be ridiculed. See, ah. Everybody will have me going to church on Sunday. Well, let me be going to church on Saturday. And they will start calling me, uh, 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 who? What do we Oh, 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 decision also kind of a mockery yes. so because of that they will not want to accept for example if you present a sabbath message so then mm -hmm. then the other one is opposition of the current pastor the pastor of their church when they hear that the person no longer goes to church again the pastor will come to the person's house uh -uh. Uh, you are uh, what happened i have not been seeing in church for many sundays now what is happening and uh, you didn't tell me anything the pastor was even in that conversation with pastor I just saw a message about the Sabbath. I say Sabbath is Saturday, not Sunday. I say, hey, no, don't worry. Don't worry about the Sabbath. It's, it's a small thing. It does not matter. Uh, it does not matter, Pastor. Pastor, it does not matter. If, if you if, if the person loves the pastor so much, hey, Pastor, are you serious? Can you tell me about it? I, that does not matter. The pastor now say, you know, you know, okay. and the yeah. Sabbath is for the Jews, okay. and we are in the New Testament time, yeah. and so because we are in the New Testament time, we need to keep okay. Sunday yeah. because just kind of resurrection on Sunday. Okay. Sabbath is an ordinary day. Don't bother, don't let mind those people because Seventh day Adventists, oh. they only be making noise every yeah. and be deceiving people. Don't join, don't come back to church. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> the pastor will be so so tactical and destroy all that just because he wants to gain his member. Some of these things can make people the world draw back from whatever you present to them as what as yes. experts, as jesus christ so now let's now look at some uh, uh, uh some decision questions that will be helpful okay now in everything now the question you cannot ask them if people start expressing all these things ask them this question ask them this person this question is everything clear Yes. Ask the person. What about what? Although what you have, all, although you have all of the all of these uh, oppositions, all of these uh, iron bands, eh, that want to prevent them from accepting. Ask them the question. What I have shared with you from the Bible. Question. Is it clear? That's a, qu a question you ask the person. The next question you ask the person is: Do you know what you should do now? And maybe person will reply with whichever way. If you say, well, uh, I think the Bible is telling me to keep the Sabbath holy. God will say, remember the Sabbath. The so say, hey. They now ask the person next question. What keeps you from doing it? What keeps you from doing it? Then you cannot add, oh, you, you plan to do it sometime, don't you? Yeah, yes, I, 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 I plan to do it. I plan to do it some other time. Then not to say, why not do it now? <laughs> why not do it now? I can quote the Bible text. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible says, Now is the day of their salvation. 
They may say, oh, let me finish my university. Why? Be, 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 oh, let me finish my... Let, I, want, I have a contract I want to win. Ah, let me finish my business. Let me make one billion. Let me make this. Tell the person, do it. Now. Why? Today is the day of our salvation. Look at this man that just died recently now. Uh, Junior Pope. Junior Pope. Yes. Junior Pope? Junior Pope is he died three days ago in the, in, in, in the sea. They were trying to shoot a movie. But who would have thought that guy would, have, would, would die by today? So you see, you will not choose kind of examples if you know of current events. You tell the person, do you know what I see tomorrow? Are you with me now? Ask the person, do you know what you will see what? Tomorrow. Now tomorrow. is the day of our salvation. If we do it say tomorrow, who, who, who gives us the F1? Who gives us the audacity? Who gives us the assurance that tomorrow we, we are going to see it? I don't know. Today, for me, I don't know what you see me tomorrow. But what I know today is today. So you that are here now, that I'm talking to online, and those that are physically here, I do what I'm sure of today. That's why I'm telling you, whatever you learn today, make sure you apply it. Because after now, I don't know if I will have tomorrow. So I try to tell the person to what? To do it now. So in getting decision, it's very vital, important to get to the bottom of whatever is causing hesitation. When you know a person has accepted Christ and believes the doctrines, yet still fails to make a positive decision, an approach such as this might help. You can say, oh, I really sense, I sense that there is something holding you back. Yeah. Could you please share with me? What is it? Share with me. What is holding you back? Let the person express whatever he wants to share. Then, now say, I know you believe what we have studied together, but something is troubling you. What is it? Once you discover what the problem is, you will have an opportunity to find a solution to the person's problem. Let's say, for instance, now, answers to excuses with bible test now as a as a missionary as a witness you must be prepared to meet with people's objections or excuses with a thought the word from the bible you must be ready to do that i want to give you this bible test please everybody i want to write at this point the first one what somebody says i can't leave my church i can't leave my church Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. John chapter 10, verse 26 and 27. Chapter 12, John chapter 12, verse 42 and 43. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 and 23. What somebody says that I can't make a living if I keep the Sabbath. I won't be able to survive. Bible tests like Matthew 6. 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God is actually every other thing shall be added unto you. Quote it. Mm -hmm. Not only quote, tell the person to read it from his own Bible. Let's see the promise. A test like Psalms 37, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 13 and 14 can help. Most of us already says that I will lose my job if I keep the Sabbath. Read Matthew chapter 16, verse 25 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. 4 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. What somebody says, it is it is inconvenient. To keep the seventh day and follow the, this doctrine. Read Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. Number five. What somebody says, I am too a great sinner. I'm a great sinner. Read what person? 4 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. Yes. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. As everyone, it says that if your sin is as red as crimson, is as dark as charcoal, as a scarlet, say God say I will make it as white as wool. Ha! Sin as red as something so red. Chris is very red, very red. But just can say that when I put my blood, it will wipe everything to become white as wool. And so we say, oh, I'm a great sinner. I cannot do it. I have done too bad thing. Read it for them. But I also read first John chapter 1, verse 9. Then what somebody says, I am afraid, I can't hold out. I can't do it, I'm afraid. Read for the Jude 24. Usually has one chapter, Jude chapter 1, verse 24. Then what somebody says, I can't live up to the truths. Read for the person, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and verse 9. John chapter 1, verse 12. What somebody says that I am not good. Enough. Mm -hmm. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. What somebody says, people would talk about me. 
read for the person john 17 verse 14 luke 6 verse 22 look maybe on the platform i will copy this and drop on the platform so that people can copy it. if you cannot follow through okay i drop on the platform read also proverbs 20 verse uh, uh, to 24 25 what was this my friends would ridicule me read for the person john chapter 15 verse 19 mark 8 34 james chapter 4 verse 4 what is what it says my husband my wife my father my mother my brothers my sisters will oppose me read for the person matthew chapter 10 verse 36 and 37 luke chapter 14 verse 26 and 27 what did the person say my preacher my friends advise me against this read for the person first kings chapter 13 verse 1 to 26 as chapter 4 verse 10 what is what i say it will cause trouble and division in my home if i take my stand for this teaching read for the person luke 12 49 and verse 53 read for the person first kings 18 verse 17 and verse 18. what it verse says there is one thing alcohol or tobacco that i cannot give up mm. i cannot give up game i cannot give up masturbation read for the person matthew chapter 19 verse 16 to 22 Matthew 6, verse 34, Luke 14, verse 33, Matthew 13, verse 45, and verse 46. Are we together? Yes, sir. Are you with me online? Yes, sir. Okay. Number 15. What if I say, no, not now. I don't think I can do it now. I will do it later. I will do it later. Read for the person Proverbs 27, verse 1. And 2 Corinthians chapter... 6 verse 2 and Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13. Read Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 and Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. What the person now also says, on that person, I am waiting for my husband, for my wife, or for a friend, so that we can accept it together. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. So, what did the person say? I am waiting for my husband, wife, my friend, so that we can join together. Read for the person Ezekiel 14, verse 20. Ezekiel 18, verse 20. Romans 14, verse 12. What they say is that I am wait. I will. I will wait until I have the right kind of feeling. My feeling right now does not accept it. I want to have the right feeling. Read for the person Isaiah forty-eight verse eighteen, First John two verse three. What if they say that? Oh, it's too late. I have waited too long. I'm too old right now. Read for the person Ezekiel thirty-three verse nineteen, John six verse thirty-seven, Romans ten verse thirteen. What if? And I say, I had tried once and now I'm afraid of trying again. Read for the person Daniel chapter 3, verse 17, Romans 4, verse 21, 2 Timothy 1, verse 12, Jude 24. What they say, how may I know that my sins are forgiven? Places are afraid, I have done so many bad things. I will end up my sins are forgiven. Read for the person 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Say, if you confess your sins, I'm able to cleanse you from all sins and all righteousness and to make you perfect. I'm able to cleanse from all things. Christ is able. Proverbs 28, verse 13 to. What about when they say some things are not yet clear? I'm not, I've not yet understood some things. Read for the person, John chapter 13, verse 7. Acts chapter 11, verse 17. What if, no, Acts 11, verse 7. Then what if somebody say, I am not so good, I, I am not so bad. I'm too, I'm not so bad in what I've been doing before now. I don't think I need what you are speaking about. I'm not, I'm not a bad person. Read for the person, John 3, verse 18, Romans 3, verse 22. The one about the basis is that God is love. He will save me anyway. I don't need to do whatever you are talking about. God loves me. No problem. He save me. No matter even if I'm bad, even if I continue what I've been doing, there is no need. God loves me. Read for the person, Luke 23, Luke 13, verse 3, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14. In chapter 2, verse 4, Matthew 7, verse 1, Romans 14, verse 12. What we say that there are too many hypocrites in your church. I don't like that your church, too many people that are pretending. Read for the person, Matthew 7, verse 1, or Romans 14, verse 12. 
What if I say the step will cost me too much? If I take this issue, ah, I'm going to lose too much. Kizito. I'm going to lose too much. Kizito, read for the person. Luke chapter 18, verse 29. And verse 30. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. I'm honestly. If somebody says, oh, my job may be at stake. <laughs> read for the person, Isaiah chapter 51, verse 7. Job 13, verse 14, and verse 15. Psalms 119, verse 72, and 127. Please, don't forget all of this. There are several things that we say. Somebody can say, I cannot leave my friends and my relatives. Read for the person, Proverbs 13, verse 20. What was what say? I believe it is not necessary to unite with a church. I need to believe in the church to be saved. Read for the person, Acts 2, verse 7. But I said, say, I am too old to change my ways. I have gone too far. Read for the person, Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. But the say, I will wait until the Spirit of God convinces me. Oh, oh, the Holy Spirit will come and convince oh, me. Hey, you cannot convince me. Read for the person, Matthew 25, verse 1 and verse 13. Hey. So those are some of these things I will share with you to be able to answer some excuses with Bible tests. And let's look at the conclusion of our message today, our training. As we set out in obedience to command of Christ, this is what we will discover. Number one, I will set out to do this work of witnessing one on one. Number one, we will discover scattered among the general population in every culture are individuals who are just waiting to discuss their spiritual condition. Okay. Sometimes we think that people are not ready to want, they are not willing to hear. Yes. You will discover that when you start meeting people, you discover people are willing, they are willing to come and meet with them. Number two, as you obey this clarion call to witness, you will find many lonely people in neighborhood who will respond to your Christian friendship. People who are lonely, they are looking for a friend. You will find them as you extend a hand of friendship to them. As you discover, as we as you go at school, you will find countless opportunities that you can even do what called medical missionaries activities. Mm -hmm. We can offer that tell people about food. Recently, I just somebody about eating with food. When you are eating and you are drinking water, it's not good. Yes, you will drink water 30 minutes before food, or you will drink water after 30 minutes of yes. after food. The only person told me, the person said, Hey, I said, Yes, so do you know the reason? I told him there's a, a an enzymes that your, your stomach secretes, your stomach lining. It's called digestive juice. They are depending for a tiling or whatever you. Once you put anything in your tummy, the body just secrete that enzymes wow, into the food. That's what acts on your food and you melt and you digest it. But when you drink water, you will take that water to dilute that enzyme, that enzyme that was secreted. So it will not act on your food because the acidity of the of the thing has been reduced. So what will happen is that food we turn to excreta. That's when you go to the toilet, you will poo, poo heavy excreta. <laughs> because Thank you know excreta is not waste product, it is undigested food. Are you with me? It's undigested. Guess what Bessie told me when I told the person all of this things yesterday, uh, some days ago. Bessie said, ah, I always eat and I always purge. When I eat, I, have, I always go to toilets too much. Since you do that, I have not been doing it. I have not been, I have not been experiencing it. I say, yes, there are more things you will, you will experience. So when you may go out, you will discover some things that people are doing that are wrong. And you will be telling them about these things. How to drink water, how to use charcoal to cure a sting, a, a scorpion uh, sting, a snake bite, how to use to cure diarrhea, how to use cure uh, stomach upset. Come on, charcoal, charcoal. Yes, charcoal, activated charcoal. Yes. Are you getting me? If you have, if you drink, if anybody drinks poison, take charcoal, mix inside a, a warm water. If it's a cold, no problem. So far, it's not too, because body will have to warm it before it starts working. Just mix it, two spoons. First, they drink uh, poison, just drink it. It will not harm you. The only, the only effect they have on you is when you are pooping, you will see your poop will turn black. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. And you know how it acts? It yeah. acts like foam. When you pour water here and you put foam, you use the foam to dry the water. That's how that charcoal will absorb the poison from your intestine, from your liver, from everything, and you'll be free. Yes. So if anybody is it's a first aid. Palm oil, use palm oil, but the most active, the most powerful one is what is charcoal. 
as simple as it. So when you go out, you don't, you don't have money to take the best to the hospital. Even you know that when somebody has a very heavy saw, like the saw that is putrefying, you see white and even the red thing. So, so it's even it's, it's decaying. Charcoal can heal it. They also mix charcoal on the on the on the line on the, a cloth. They make it like paste, like uh, paste used to brush it now. Mix more water with charcoal and become like paste. Then we put it on a it can be a paper first. Spread it and then put that charcoal on that sock. Look for lino. Use lino to cover it. Then look for bandage and bandage it. Change it every day. The next one week, open that sock. You'll be seeing healing up. Because that will be a soul. See, when you do missionary work, you will be blessed how God will be used to bless others. Yeah. I have been, I have been, I have been on it over 13, 14 years. I, I, Pastor Bullis is here. He was my partner. He was my partner in Louis. one of our missions. And we, we experience God in the in new dimension. So my brothers, my sisters, God wants to use us. Amen. God wants to use us. Only one we should be ready, we should be ready to learn and to act to to you to, to 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 follow. Then number four, when you go out, Christ is a fact of conscience as well as a historical person. Even the most irreligious people have their moment of conviction when the gospel can reach them. People who think that they are irreligious, we are able to have this on our talk with them. Remember, I told you how to preach the gospel. Yes. Number one, you preach about the love of God, is the attraction. Number two is what? No. Talk is about that, sin as a problem. From... Sin that separates us from God. Is that? Is that? Then you talk about to them, you go to the point of the solution. The solution is Jesus Christ. The solution is who? It's Jesus yeah, Christ. Christ. They preach John 3 to them. And the next thing, say them to detach from sin, to exactly. run away from sin, and they attach to who? Jesus Christ, that's the gospel. After you finish that, you have assessed the person has accepted Jesus Christ. That's when I start to see them about the law of God, the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath, and all of that. But the first thing is to introduce them to who God. Jesus to Jesus to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, what Jesus had to say. But Jesus is the main person you connect them and they came to die for us. So that is in the number five. People of all faiths who have lost their way will respond to a personal invitation to get right with God. Those who, they are people who are backslided. But when you meet with them, you let them know this. They come to faith. It's the only that will do it. So finally, soul winning puts you in the center of God's activities. It consists of taking the hand of your friend with one hand, like I said, and then the other hand of Christ with what? With the other, and then placing the hand together. together. This being true feelings of personal failure of success. So don't be thinking that, oh, when you do it, you will fail. There is no place for failure in this work because you are cooperating with a God that knows no words, no you failure. You, so you cannot fail in the work. You Using your social media to do the evangelism, you cannot fail. Doing the one-on-one -on -one in your community, in your neighborhood, in your family, in your school, in your class, you cannot fail. So as you do so many work, your own faith will grow stronger. Yes, our witnessing will become a way of life that expresses the love between Christ and us. Amen. Amen. So that yes. is Amen. our study for today. So don't don't wait to say uh, you practice tomorrow. You have to begin even from today so let's take questions and uh, comments yes huh? oh thank you very much after the message again after the message again that's when we'll do that i will do that thank you yes that's me so, just sit down so what if they are not like they like like you can go to the like this like you go to the town and let's say you're in the market you follow your mom and mm -hmm. your mom just jumped down from the car mm -hmm. and she has and, and she and she's in the market too. and one of the person like the woman the woman having her own shop her own child is there and it's, and it's like you know that the child and we are still here to, please don't leave are you not try to like maybe you should talk to the person you say that okay let me let me preach to you Maybe you can also preach your mom mm -hmm. and And if I just like, see, leave me alone. You see that? You see that I'm doing something here? Mm. See, just leave me alone. People who are waiters, sellers of one commodity or the other, 
I told you yesterday, they don't have all the time. What you just do, have trust with you. Thank you. Your bottle looks so fresh. Please read this. I want you have free time. You go. So you don't have to engage. Just tell them, if you want to reach out to me, my phone and number and my name is behind the contact. Finish. People that don't have time, just drop it in with them and pray Holy Spirit will use them. And if they reject you, don't be disappointed. I told you yesterday, have a mindset of disappointment. It can come. Many will reject you, many will accept you. Have the mindset. Yes. Sit down and answer a question. Some people might accept the chat, but they will not read it. Yes. It is something you must also accept. Now, let me tell you one thing. Tracts, as you see it, whoever takes it from you <coughs> might read it, might not read it. Not if you're concerned. You'll be surprised. The person will it be a, tra a, a transporter of these tracks to a place you cannot get to. As long as it's material, the person will take it to a different place and drop it. Another person will pick it and read it. And the person will be blessed. That's the power of tracks. The person will drop it. Let me tell you a story. There was a story of somebody inside a toilet, a public toilet, that you gave to somebody, somebody it on, along the street and go to the toilet and dumped it inside the toilet uh, waste bin. Why the person was pooping? And I said, so what is this? And I picked it out and mm -hmm. he was reading it. As he was reading it, that was the conversion of the person. Inside the toilet, a trust convert somebody. Jesus. That's the power of what? Trust of materials. So don't be, don't My see, kid. don't be consigned. Give it out. Spread it. Let it be like the leaves of autumn. Not the meaning of leaves of autumn. The ministry's name is what? Leaves of autumn. Leaves, leaves that fall from the tree during the dry season, Amatan season. Yeah. At that time, trees will be losing their leaves. Yes. They fall to the ground. There will be plenty. That's what we call yes. leaves of autumn ministries. Let it spread everywhere. Who God will use to read it, we read it and be blessed. Yes. Don't be concerned. Just spread. Just spread it. Just give it. Just give it. Don't, don't go and give it. It's not baby. You <laughs> just hear it in your presence. I'll our mind and I'll eat it. Give it to adults. Let them read it. Don't read it. No problem. Just give it. So, teenagers. Yes. Teenagers. As many anybody can give. Give. So, what that, that person, I'm still talking about that uh, market to move to stand. What if that person really wanted to impact? Like, mm. you, you love that person. And you don't want the person to go to hell. Mm. You, want the, you want to see the person again. Mm. But when you get to hell. Your you prayer will be the one to reach the person now. Mm. Go home and keep praying for the person. You can't force yourself into the people. You can't love the more than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to die for us, isn't it? So, yes. did you does Jesus Christ love everybody? Yes. The soldiers that nailed his hand to the cross, do love? Does he love them? Yes. Yes. Does he love Pilate? Yes. yes. Did you see that he stopped there for nearly? No matter how you love people, give them chance to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. When they will receive it, they will receive it. That's why in mm -hmm. I think in Revelation mm -hmm. one verse seven, we say those that pierced him, we see him when he's coming. Is that they repent and not that all they don't repent, but we are own. Pray for them, do whatever you can do, and leave them. Don't force anybody, but encourage them. Hmm? Appeal. Pray for them. Okay? So that is it. Yes, sir. So any other question? No question. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Sir, no question. No question. All right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, normal stage you release know, arrow dance. Like, yes. You know, this mm -hmm. dance. If you come, like all those drunkards, now you go to the slap you do anything. I want to preach to them. You give them the tract. You do in, in your in your presence. You do something for the drunk in that chat. Well, okay. <laughs> those people that might look arrogant or violent, you also have to be careful. But see, there's always a way. You see, Holy Spirit directs you you know if not if you if you, there are some women who be so working so much they are arrogant mm. they don't want to even listen to you you know how to enter women uh -huh. to their children mm. play with their children as you come oh baby oh beautiful baby they will not they will not just say oh, god bless you my god bless you boy god bless you girl Hi. oh oh sorry sorry you fell down pick the child off sorry and mommy how are you do good afternoon mom good afternoon sir you know, nice. from the from they were not kidnapped. As long as you have seen it with the Bible, they see how you are friendly. They will not. Even Jesus Christ was attracted. Children, he, he loves children. Not you do it, people. Love, really love children. Really love people. 
So there are some people that are who are drunkard, who are smokers. You don't go to their den, no. <laughs> if you must go there, make sure you are too. You must stop sharing your screen. Stop sharing your screen. Thank you. So please, you must go into. You must go have to go to those places, okay? Yes, but make sure you just pray. Holy Spirit will guide you. But don't enter danger when you see it. Yes, Do don't enter people's room. Stay outside. I said it's always the best. Don't go into people's houses. So what if they invite you? What in. if they invite you? Mm -hmm. You must be two if you must enter. Okay. If you are two that went after, it's only you don't go into anywhere. Tell them thank you. I prefer to stay here. If they say in this, so no problem. I will call, I will come next time. And next time I will come with my partner, we'll come together and then walk your way. Don't go into any especially girls. Don't go into anybody's house. Oh. Any wow. brother or oh, even auntie, don't go in. Not true, true, true. They didn't say, say that. All right, at this point, we we'll bring it to this uh, lesson to you. So, you said that you wanted to share a link to us that we used yes. to. Just write it and drop it on the platform. Drop it inside the platform when we are done. So thank you very much, brothers and sisters. At this point, let's uh, send another question. We'll meet by God's grace again next yes. week we'll on Saturday back. by 4 p.m. again. Please try to be here. Then we'll meet on Sunday. And gradually, we are coming close to the end of this training. So to this end, let's yes, yes, sir. Yes, let's omit ourselves now and let's share the grace together. I want to go. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely. I wish I'd be the house of the Lord alone. Amen. 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 Amen